Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Wilhelm Screaming. Welcome back to another day in Destiny 2 for some more Destiny 2 news and Lightfall Season of the Witch. Still Festival of the Lost, though that is not what we're here to talk about today. Intel. Now, in today's video, we're going to be covering this week's Nightfall, which once again is the Heist Battlegrounds Europa. And this particular strike is also, once again, rewarding the Warden's Law hand cannon. Now this hand cannon is actually super good for both PvP as well as PvE. I believe at the moment is actually the highest damage output PvP and PvE hand cannon. But you can also guarantee yourself the adept version of this particular hand cannon if you can complete this week's Nightfall Strike at the GM difficulty and get a platinum score. And it's very doable, but I will run you through all the different cheeses that you can use in this particular strike, including one major glitch for the boss that allow you to get completely out of bounds and stay nice and safe while doing damage in no danger whatsoever. All these things can be used for solo runs. If you enjoy this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the bell to post notifications so you never miss out on any future Destiny 2 Lightfall content like this, you can also follow me on Instagram or Twitter. They'll be linked in the description box down below. Remember, any of those things also enter you into any future giveaways on this YouTube channel, and we do one every 1,000 subscribers, so you never want to miss out. And of course, if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll have that secret hashtag you can leave in the comments section for another entry into the next giveaway for this video. And remember, they stack between all videos, so if you haven't done that on a previous piece of content on this channel, you can always go back, check out another video, and of course, do it again. And remember, when we reach 100,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel, we'll be giving away an Xbox Series X. So if you're doing this as a solo player, I'm going to recommend using a Hunter. I think that's going to be your best bet. Just the invisibility. There's some interesting builds I've seen going around with Strand and Assassin's Cowl. Let me know if you'd like to see maybe a tutorial on that, but might be a good... Uh, option for this particular one. For this first zone, which I think can catch a lot of people out, it's a lot of enemies you're going to have to battle here, as all the battlegrounds are. You can get out of the map by just going up onto this back wall, and you can actually go up on top of the map, though you can't shoot any of the enemies. From up there, you can still shoot them from the top of the back wall where you see me here. Could save you some time, could also, like I said, assist with solo runs or maybe help out some teammates, just making sure somebody stays alive. This area where you have to jump down on all the different bridges, I think the first ogres that you have to battle are the major issue. Again, one of those things that is surprisingly difficult and even though it seems easy, might catch a few players out. If you stand at the back of that gantry on the left, you can still shoot them and they will not actually shoot you. If you go a little bit forward, they will start shooting at you. But if you leave a bit of distance, you'll be fine. For this next section, try to take out that uh, marked enemy first. I can't remember the name of the actual enemy. But if you can kill them from up on top of the second bridge, you're doing great. Otherwise, you might have to jump down into the left area. Again, if you have Invis, that's your number one target because once you have him gone or if you don't really even allow him to uh, take away your super, you're really moving through this section and you're in good shape. For the next few sections, there's going to be a lot of sort of sit and wait, hold the door kind of thing. Once you get into this very wide hallway. Again, keep the cover on the left and the right to your advantage. You can even do healing wells up on top sometimes behind this shelving on the right and the left. And then just always press forward, but keep that at least one side of the map um, out of your purview so you don't get shot by any of the enemies and you can just take out either one side, the left or the right. Try to take out those champions in the beginning as quickly as possible. And then I actually liked to just take out the one champion in the back, that servitor. For the next part, similar to most of the battlegrounds, jump up on the top first 
And if you are doing this in a group, you can send somebody to the far left or far right before you actually start shooting the runes on the door. Um, that'll prevent them from getting caught out by another group of enemy spawns. It's just, I think, a better way to do it. And for the final boss room, where the major glitch or cheese is going to come in handy, we have the right and left of the room as you enter. We have these pipes that go up to the top. Now, unfortunately, you can't go all the way up to the top, but you can still hide behind them when you're on this side of the room. Under the stairs to the right side of the room is another good option, though that's more of just a holdout kind of zone. Maybe you want to send one of your teammates over there, but I would actually say that's where you want to go if you want to have all three of you just sort of clumped up and trying to face all the ads without really a major cheese other than just your ability to survive and work together as a team as it will mitigate a certain amount of damage but behind the, behind the pipes here are really the way that you can stay out of range of all the enemies and just work on the boss though the boss can still shoot you on occasion you're pretty safe and i would say maybe having two people on the left or two people on the right and one on the opposite side keep in mind the Ground and footing up here can be a little bit tricky, so you might slide off one of the pipes occasionally, but overall it's a good place. And the great thing actually about that particular area is it allows you to get out of bounds and circumnavigate the map outside of the actual boss arena. So you can actually do this too at the beginning of the actual boss encounter. Instead of going to the left or the right, you could actually run all the way across past where the boss spawns in and though I take the long way around here you can jump outside of the map here and as I said go completely around the boss arena without having to worry about any of the enemies keep in mind there are turn back barriers at different places but if you're quick enough you'll just get adjoining allies you can actually still get all the way around now I don't know how well you could do this on a hunter but I think you can definitely get to this area simply by going to the backside of the boss arena and jumping up on to these um, pipes instead of the ones on the opposite side I think everybody should be able to do most of that though you might not be able to go completely around the map on anything other than a warlock or possibly a titan with a sword if you are going the under the stairs route make sure that if you're a warlock and you're planting healing rifts, which you're going to have to have, plant them directly behind the stairs so they don't get knocked by any of the champions that are going to be spawning. The Hierarchy of Needs is a bow I've seen used quite a bit in this because you can, as I said, sort of stay out of range, hiding behind any one set of those pipes that you use for the cheese. And so long as you've hit the boss a couple of times, then you can essentially shoot this around corners. So you don't even have to look at the boss or really look in the direct direction of the boss. So this could come in handy for the cheese. I've seen it used quite a bit. But I really suggest farming out the Warden's Law this week. As I said, it is really good for PvP. I've been loving it. And for PvE, I haven't used it quite as much but I've seen some damage testing on it for different raid bosses and it is quite impressive definitely up there top tier hand cannon DPS output I don't know if it's the best primary that you could find overall but for hand cannons it's uh, definitely in the top five maybe just the top two and the other one being an exotic I can't remember the name of the hand cannon it was actually competing with but Given the right groupage of build and stats, as well as mods, you can really do a ton of damage with this hand cannon. So good luck farming it this week. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel as always. If you've watched to this point in the video, you can leave a hashtag Europa, or a hashtag Lightfall, or a hashtag Festival of the Lost, or Season of the Witch in the comment section down below for another entry into the next giveaway for this video. And once more, I am Wilhelm Scream. And of course, we will see you next time.